One strategic component uh, seems clearly to be looking to the future in terms of bringing a new younger audience to the folk festival. I think I would be fair to say that the average age of performers that are going to be at this festival is, is a good cut below any previous Ottawa folk festival. Uh, probably true, yeah. And I mean, that's definitely something I think that, you know, for, for a festival to be sustainable, it needs to engage new generations of fans and that doesn't mean sort of completely shifting and you know you don't want to alienate your core audience you don't want to lose you know the the audience that has made your festival and built your festival but you need to bring in new people you need to engage them and you want to be able to engage them with you know all aspects of the festival so that includes you know sort of <clears throat> you know established um folk artists as well as new folk artists and you bring in you know someone like a group like horse feathers um who are a great new outfit out of portland oregon uh a really very traditional sound in a lot of ways, but bringing in some new elements and something that's really going to, you know, appeal to um, to a younger audience, or something like the Acorn out of, you know, Ottawa's own Acorn, who, you know, obviously have a really strong following and a strong young following because they're all young guys themselves, and so, and they're working very much in the sort of folk music tradition and bringing in various elements of different of different folk traditions from around the world into what they're doing, as well as you know, sort of indie rock uh, uh, traditions. So they resonate with, you know, they're going to resonate with an older audience, I think, as well as with the younger audience. We're with Jill's Mud at the Ottawa Folk Festival lineup announcement. And of course, Jill has been announced as being part of the lineup. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Rock. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. So tell us what it means for a local artist. Uh, I mean, you've had your debut album just out in the last year. You still regard yourself as a fairly new up and coming artist. To have an opportunity to play at a major festival like this, especially in your hometown, what does it mean for you and, and in general for, for local artists, do you think? Well, I definitely consider myself a, a new artist. And so to be included on that lineup is, is a really fantastic and a dream come true. Um, I think, you know, when you release your first album and you're starting to take it out on tour and do shows and clubs, it's, it's fantastic. It's what it's all about. But then um, the summer festival is kind of like the mecca of, of gigs. So I'm, I'm really excited. And I have to say, I have a small crush on Jim Cuddy, so to be included on the same lineup as Jim Cuddy, I may have sparkles in my eyes, which we won't tell my boyfriend about. Uh, our lips are sealed. <laughs> yeah, and I guess just generally, one of the things I'm excited about as well is the chance to collaborate and meet other artists, um, because not only do we get a chance to perform a set, we also get to do workshops. So I don't know who I'm doing workshops with yet, but I think that's one of the fantastic things about the Ottawa Folk Festival. It's a chance to meet other musicians from all over the world, as we saw with the lineup, and uh, and get a chance to see what they're doing and, and maybe exchange numbers. That's really where the real action I think happens at the Folk Festival on the day stages mm -hmm. where artists who have never m often met or, or collaborated before are sort of thrown together in a melting pot mm -hmm. and uh, exchange songs, start playing on each other's songs, different dynamics happen, different friendships form. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for the audience that's often the real treat of the festival. Well, I know I look forward to it when I go to festivals, so it's, it's going to be wonderful for me to take part as a musician this time and, and be one of the singers in the round, or, or so to speak. And I remember when you first came to town, Chopper McKinnon uh, of CKCU's folk program had you on his show and was sort of very um, proactive about pushing, you know, not to lose the traditional, I don't want to say greybeard, but the traditional uh, singer-songwriter type of component. Yeah. I think it's fair to say that this this lineup has less of that, certainly, th th than previously, and that is going to, you know, be a, be a, be a factor for, for a certain amount of the traditional Ottawa Folk Festival audience. So what do you say to those people? Uh, I would say that they, I would encourage them to approach the festival with an open mind. There will be, you know, there, there are definitely uh, singer-songwriters, you know, traditional folk troubadours at the festival. Um, and there's also a lot of other, uh, a, lo a lot of other music at the festival. And I think that there's, <clears throat> um, you know, there's also waves at a festival. You know, some years you sort of, uh, 
there may be a real focus for for whatever reason on Celtic music, or there may be a real focus on on sort of um, different world music, and. Um, so I think you know you can't have everything at the festival every year. You can have elements of everything, but you can't really have you know the big chunk. So I would, I think that it's, uh, <clears throat> I would say come to the festival and enjoy. And if you if you have a terrible experience, then come and talk to me personally, and, <laughs> and I won't give your money back. <laughs> but you'll listen. But I'll listen. <laughs>